hopefully uh, the year that's passed has been uh, reasonably enjoyable, particularly uh, Christmas period. I've got a question to ask you. Have you got rabbits in your paddock? I've got rabbits in my paddock. I've been waging a war with rabbits on our four acre property in Gara Junction for years. We went out onto the balcony with our grandchildren at one stage and uh, we counted the rabbits. There were 19. That's not counting those that were still in their burrows and uh, not to be seen. Every new tree I plant must have a bird wire protection. Every garden bed which I have has to be surrounded with a fence. I heard someone say that uh, there are some plants that rabbits won't eat. Uh, I checked out on the internet and made a list of 20 plants uh, that they told me rabbits don't eat. I went to Bunnings and I spent $150 on buying these precious plants like geraniums and poppies. Well, I've got to tell you, that's fake news. Rabbits will eat any plant that I put in my garden. The church uh, bought uh, a new rose for us uh, and we planted in our garden uh, during the winter period confident that we would uh, have uh, roses and uh, that the rabbits wouldn't eat them because of the prickles. Well, I can tell you that the rabbits, as soon as the green uh, leaves came out, were onto them and ate every one of them and uh, were able to avoid the thorns. Those pesky rabbits have over three acres of grass to eat on our property. Yet they've got to attack my garden plants. The grass, I guess, is the main meal for them. My plants, they see as sweets. And we all know how much we enjoy sweets. In my message today, I'm making an analogy. The word rabbit is the equivalent to behavior that is unacceptable to God. You know, in the Bible, uh, rabbits or hares are mentioned. In Leviticus 11.6 it says that the hare, or the rabbit, because it chews the cud, but does not part the hoof, it's unclean to you. So that Jewish people uh, don't eat rabbits. Uh, they see them as unclean, as something which separates them from God. Brigetta and I, when we were first married, uh, lived uh, in the inner city, and we used to go to the Queen Victoria Market uh, and uh, do our shopping each, each week. Our staple diet was rabbits. It's interesting that uh, Brigitte and I were very much blessed. Uh, so I'm just wondering about that verse and what the implications of it might mean. Rabbits are kind of cute, aren't they? It was very enjoyable uh, looking out our windows and watching the rabbits play, particularly the, the younger ones, chasing each other around the paddock, enjoying themselves, and really, really beautiful and, and lovely animals to look at. I, I guess it's similar to Adam and Eve in the, the garden. Uh, Eve uh, saw the fruit on the tree that God had said they shouldn't eat, uh, but it looked pretty nice, and uh, so she took one and, and tried it. Only one little fruit's not going to hurt anyone, she thought to herself. I guess uh, that's the same uh, when it comes to rabbits. Uh, just a few little rabbits in the paddock are not going to hurt anyone. European rabbits were introduced to Australia in the 18th century uh, with the first fleet and eventually became widespread. In January 2020, that's a year ago, it was estimated that 200 min million feral rabbits inhabit Australia. One little rabbit, two little rabbits, <laughs> 200 million feral rabbits in Australia. Uh, we used to uh, have a, a pet rabbit, our children wanted one, and uh, we, we bought one when they were, they were little. And it was very cute when it was little, but as it grew, uh, it sort of changed its personality and uh, you'd try to get it to take it out to put it outside and it would actually growl at you 
and uh, go to bite the, the, the children. In fact, the children became quite scared of it. Its eyes uh, uh, turned turned red and, uh, and, and nasty. Well, one day that uh, rabbit uh, disappeared from our back garden. We were living in a different spot at that time and uh, we never saw it again, nor did we go looking for it. We were quite happy to see the end of it. There's a passage in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19 to 21 that goes this way. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Paul says, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Working with my analogy, this is the list of evil rabbits that can inhabit our lives. There are actually four groups. Number one is the, it relates to marriage. Uh, uh, marriage in God's sight is deformed into sexual immorality and impurity and sensuality. Number two is the, the worship of God. Uh, that descends into idolatry and sorcery. Number three grouping is uh, loving people, which we're admonished to do in the Bible, moves in us to a promotion of ourselves, uh, the, that we look at uh, improving our own situation, we, we endeavour uh, to uh, you know, take control of other people's lives through our jealousy, our fits of anger, through rivalries, dissensions and divisions and envy. And then uh, self-control, uh, number four, descends into drunkenness and orgies. Let's take a look at the first one, the first rabbit called Hinomisi. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity and sensuality. The story of Samson, perhaps in the Old Testament, uh, illustrates what I want to get across. Uh, first of all, Samson sees a, a, a Philistine girl that he really likes and he decides he wants to marry her. He tries to organise it with his dad uh, and uh, the happy day comes, but uh, there's an argument, a dispute, and, and, and uh, Samson gets angry and, and heads off home. The father-in-law uh, marries his wife off uh, to another man, actually his best man, and that gets under Samson's skin and he kills a few people just to uh, say he's unhappy. Pretty awful sort of uh, climate in those days. Uh, he then resorts to short-term prostitution, an attempt to gain intimacy uh, through a different way. Ultimately, uh, when that breaks up, uh, he ultimately has a very sensual and erratic relationship uh, with Delilah, uh, based on a gamesmanship, mistrust and deception. He uh, eventually, his, uh, his strength is discovered and he's captured and ultimately uh, dies. You see, Samson's love, as God designed it, moves to the rabbit of intimacy sexual immorality, impurity and sensuality. True love in Samson's life is traded for something else and the result is the destruction of everyone around him, including himself. For you and I to be intimate at any cost and to go to any length does not bring happiness or fulfilment, but rather brings destruction of our souls and everyone else our lives touch. The second rabbit is called deification. The passage reads, now the works of the flesh are evident, idolatry and sorcery. The definition of uh, idolatry is to regard or treat someone or something as a God other than the true God. God expects and wants you and I to honour him and to follow him above everything else or anyone else. God says to Moses in the Old Testament to his people, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. In the Old Testament, people made gods out of stone or wood. They ignored the God who had created them. Effectively, they created their own gods and worshipped them. 
today in our Western world, we do not believe that idols uh, made of stone or wood are gods. But often we regard or treat someone else or something else as God. The person we love, a wife, a husband, a mother, a father, a children, a politician, Trump, Johnson, Morrison, uh, footballers, uh, Gary Ablett, uh, senior was actually uh, calling newspapers uh, uh, God uh, and his uh, son uh, Gary Ablett Jr. as the son of God. For many in football or cricket it's, it's like a, a religion, it takes preeminence above anything and everybody else. Most of us have an interest that provides us pleasure, a challenge, a sense of purpose, a group of people who become very special for us. That's commendable and good. The danger is when we put this person or interest above our own devotions and loyalty to God. This is when the rabbit of deification begins to destroy our world. The third rabbit is called control. The passage reads, uh, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy. All of these words describe a person who uses his or her emotions and actions in order to control people around him or her. It's not only destructive of their own lives, but also of others around them. I call this the rabbit of control. Picture uh, a person dressed in a suit and uh, holding a remote and, and controlling anything and everything around him or her. It's illustrated in the Bible story of Naboth's uh, vineyard starring Queen Jezebel. Jezebel uh, said to her husband, is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat, cheer up and I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. The king, Ahab, uh, had a castle and beside the castle was this little vineyard owned by this elderly man. It was the only thing he had, it was all he, he inherited uh, from his dad. And he was running this little vineyard. The king wanted it for his garden and uh, tried to negotiate with Ahab. Uh, Ahab tried to negotiate uh, with Naboth to buy the garden. Naboth said, no I can't, it's my family inheritance. Uh, and, and Naboth uh, uh, was determined to, to hang on to it, whatever the king said. Well, King Ahab went home, put himself to bed, uh, glum and miserable, and his wife came home and said, you know, what's wrong? Uh, and he said, oh, Naboth won't sell me his, his vineyard. And she said, well, you're the king. I'll get it organised for you. And she went ahead and organised some people to speak against uh, Naboth, uh, so he was a, a traitor to the country and so on, and they had him put to death. And ultimately she returned back to Ahab and said, uh, uh, it's, it's all yours. You see, leadership, challenging, making a strong stand, are good qualities in a person, and they'll be admired and respected. However, when a person turns to uh, jealousy, to fits of anger, uh, to rivalries, to cause problems and difficulties with people, envy, to gain control over others or to get their own way, then they themselves become slaves to the evil habit of control. The fourth rabbit is called chaos. The passage talks about drunkenness and orgies and things like this. I guess it's illustrated in the demon-possessed man that Jesus was confronted with when he got off the boat and uh, this man was in amongst the, uh, the, the cemetery at the time and came out screaming and raving and uh, said to Jesus, uh, uh, don't come near me. And, and uh, Jesus uh, spoke to him uh, and, and saw that he was possessed by evil spirits and he spoke to those evil spirits and, and, and drove them out. When we were children, Every uh, 5th of November we used to have Guy Fawkes Night and a bonfire and uh, we loved to have our firecrackers so we can't have it these days but we did as kids. 
there was one of those firecrackers which was called a jumping jack. And it was uh, uh, a, uh, I guess, a tube that had uh, gunpowder put in it, and then it was tied off and then folded over. And so what happened when you, you lit the end and then the first section would uh, fire off and it would jump and then it would uh, wait a few seconds and then the next one would jump and it would go all over the place. The kids loved it and the ladies screamed and that made it even better for us. The picture describes a person who is out of control, who has lost themselves in addiction to alcohol or to drugs or some other addictive practice, who are destroying themselves and those whom they love who are around them. You never know when all hell is going to break loose. They're constantly on tender hooks, waiting for signs of another explosion, and then trying to work out which way to jump or how to handle it. It's the rabbit which I call uh, chaos. I once was a pastor to a Christian lady who every three or four months would go on an alcoholic binge. I visited her on, on one occasion and her life was very much like the jumping jack. Uh, you'd go okay for a little while but then everything would explode and everything would happen. I visited her uh, in a psychiatric ward in, in hospital and uh, she, she said to me as I talked to her, I have all these voices inside of me that uh, are telling me to take my own life. You see, this is a life in, in chaos. The, the voices are saying to have another drink. You don't deserve to have a good life. Have another drink. Your friends are sick of you. They don't want to know you. Have another drink. You're a failure. You don't deserve a family. They're better off without you. Have another drink. The voices are entirely negative because they come straight from hell. Satan is out to destroy them and everyone around them. They've taken over uh, by the rabbit uh, out of control the rabbit of chaos. There was that demon-possessed man that I talked about initially, confronted by Jesus, pictures him, the verse, actually, verse 27 of Luke uh, chapter 8. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right man, and they were blind and they were afraid. You know, people controlled by rabbits can be clean. In Acts chapter 10, Peter is uh, up on top of the roof in the house where he's living at that occasion. And he sees a, a vision or a dream uh, of a sheet coming down from heaven. And on top of the sheet are walking around animals of every description. Uh, animals that were unclean. The passage says, Peter says, uh, when, when God says to him, get up and eat Peter, and uh, I'm sure there are rabbits amongst those, uh, those animals. Uh, and uh, Peter says, uh, when he's asked to eat, he says, by no means, Lord, for I've never eaten anything unholy and unclean. Again, a voice comes to him a second time, what God has cleansed, no longer consider unholy. Just as he finishes the vision, there's a knock at the, the door. Peter goes down and there's some uh, men who are servants of the Roman centurion Cornelius who wants to hear about this Jesus. He says, can you come and tell him uh, about it? He wants to know. So Peter travels with them uh, to Cornelius' home. Peter shares Jesus' story with Cornelius and his family and his friends. And as he spoke, the Holy Spirit uh, filled his non-Jewish listeners. Peter realised that God accepts not only Jews but also non-Jews, uh, the Romans even. And Peter prays for them and uh, baptises Cornelius and his whole household. As I've said in the Old Testament, rabbit or hares are considered to be unclean. But what God has cleansed no longer consider unholy was the message that God was saying to Peter. And that applies to people as well when they are possessed by the rabbits of life they can be clean and ultimately accepted by God because of Jesus death on the cross and cleansing the forgiveness that comes the Roman centurion 
people taken over by rabbits, even the most sinful and awful person can be cleaned as white as snow, as David says in Psalm 51 in the Old Testament. You can be acceptable to God. In fact, you are loved by God even when you are possessed by an evil rabbit. What God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. It doesn't matter how bad you have been. It doesn't matter what you have done. If you confess your vulnerability to the obsessive rabbits in your life, when you ask Jesus to banish the obsession in you and forgive you the harm that you have done, when you ask Jesus to change your way of life and to come into your life and to help you change, you become clean and you are accepted by God. Can you build a rabbit-proof fence? Various methods in the 20th century have been attempted to control the Australian rabbit population. Conventional methods including shooting rabbits and destroying their warrens, but these only have limited success. In 1907, a rabbit-proof fence was built in Western Australia in order to contain the rabbits. Then myxomatosis uh, was introduced into the rabbit population in the 1950s and had the effect of severely reducing the rabbit population. However, the survivors have since adapted and partially recovered their previous numbers. My attempt at building a fence to keep out the rabbits uh, has been enormous. Uh, I planted some plants this year and uh, put wire all around them and uh, discovered these tiny little rabbits that got through the wire that I had included there. And, and so I put fresh wire in there, a smaller wire, and then they found another crack to get in. Uh, they got in, you know. Uh, Ultimately, it's so hard to keep those little rabbits out of our lives. My brother and I went uh, rabbiting on the flats uh, over, the, over the way from our place when I was a teenager. And uh, we had a truck and we had lights and a few guys with shotguns and, and, and rifles, 22s. And we went out and uh, uh, we were shooting the rabbits. Uh, my brother had uh, a gun and he, he uh, eventually said to me, Ray, would you like to have a go? I was quite keen and, and uh, this rabbit was caught in the spotlight and uh, I aimed and, and, and shot at it and didn't make any difference. I missed it and then I shot again and still missed. I couldn't load if I could hit the thing, a terrible shot. And, and so eventually I unloaded the, the rifle and uh, turned it around and holding the barrel, I went over and hit the rabbit on the head. That was the only way I could kill it. My brother Max uh, yelled at me and said, what are you doing? You've broken my rifle. You know, a couple of things I reflect on that. Number one, I'm a terrible shot. Number two, rabbits are stunned by bright light and confused and don't know what to do. John the Apostle writes in his letter to the churches in 1 John 1 8, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. The question is, do you get it? Rabbits are stunned by bright light. If you invite Jesus into your life and walk each day with him, then the rabbits in your life which you've been talking about will be stunned and knocked out and eliminated from your life. That is what happens. If I walk in the light as Jesus is in the light, I will not want to be sexually immoral. I will not want to have impure thoughts. I will not indulge in sensual pornography. The light of Jesus in me expunges the darkness so that the darkness no longer exists. If you walk in the light as Jesus is in the light, you'll honour God first above anyone else or anything else and come to love him as your heavenly father. And when you have a need, you will not look for your lucky stars, but come in prayer to share your need with him. The light of Jesus in me expunges the darkness so that the darkness no longer exists. If you and I walk in the light as Jesus is in the light, then you and I will give God control of our lives and ask God to control the world around us. Instead of enmity, we will express goodwill and friendship. Instead of strife, we will bring harmony and cooperation. Instead of jealousy, we will bring trust and understanding. Instead of fits of anger, we will bring sweetness and a sense of humour. 
Instead of rivalries, we'll bring agreement and accord. Instead of dissensions, we'll bring harmony. Instead of divisions, we'll bring unity. Instead of envy, we'll bring generosity and gladness. The light of Jesus in me expunges the darkness so that the darkness no longer exists. If you walk in the light as Jesus is in the light, then you'll not get drunk, but be sober and responsible. You will not participate in orgies, but be moderate and temperate. The light of Jesus in me expunges the darkness so that the darkness no longer exists. Don't build fences to keep the rabbits out. That may work for a time, but those little cute, tiny and harmless bunnies will eventually find a hole in that fence and get in and start munching away all the goodness in you and end up leaving you barren with barren soil and lots of ugly weeds and thistles and thorns with a heap of burrows which can easily trip you up. Do, however, store up your word in your uh, your word in my heart that I might not sin against you, the Psalm 119 11 says. Ask Jesus each day to walk with you and to fill you with his light. Then read, learn, listen, remind, talk about, watch, dial, copy, write, repeat, share, sing about, tell, dance, act out, meditate the words of Jesus from the Gospels so that he and they become part of your DNA. Then you won't have rabbits in your paddock.